First of all, I have to pay my highest respect to Trubu Skull, Root Guru Grand Master Lu, and the Lineage Grand Masters. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we are going to talk on Grand Master Lu's book, number 266. On the, the name of it in Chinese is Huang Jin Ha, the Golden Wisdom Chapter. My Secret Yoga. And this is Grand Master's secret on his meditations practice. Before we're going to go into this, I would like to start with the traditions of Buddhist teachings on meditations ever since Buddha's time. Next, pa next page. So Sakyamuni Buddha is 2,600 years ago. Our founder of the Buddhist, uh, Buddhism has proven with his own experience of meditations to the liberations from suffering to attain enlightenment. Page, next page. According to the Buddhist teachings recorded in the Long Discourse Sutra, taught by the Buddha on meditations, where his first speech on meditation is, monks, go to the forest and do your meditations with sitting up straight and mindfulness of your breathing when it's developed and cultivated, it is a great fruit and benefit. So Buddha emphasized a lot of meditations with posture, sitting up straight, and mindfulness on breathing. So there's three in his first teachings of meditations. First is positions of your sitting positions. Second is your mind. And third is your breathing. Nowadays, the Buddhism has many traditions. They are Theravada, Mahayana, Vajrayana, and all of them are having this method taught by the Buddha in the ancient time as the fundamental practice of meditation. So why Buddha stated that mindfulness of breathing is important? Buddha said that mindfulness of breath, develop and repeatedly practice, that's an important point here, repeatedly practice, is of great fruit, great benefit, and it will lead to clear visions and deliverance. Next page. Now, Buddhism has offered many traditions of meditation. You know, that we know that there are Theravada, Mahayana, and Vajrayana. And there are in many different kinds of meditation methods. There are mindfulness meditation, breathing meditation, chanting meditations, visualizations meditation, inner energy meditation, especially in Vajrayana. However, the most basic one is the mindfulness meditation, or in Sanskrit, it's called the Samanda Meditations. Next page. So Root Guru of the Three Buddha Skull has written 267 books, many, in his lifetime. He's still continuing. But among all these books, there are many of them talk some meditations. Some of the grandmasters' book talk on meditations with three important points. Again, number one, posture. Number two is the breathing. And number three is the stable of the mind. Visualizations with idams as oneness, you see. So posture, breathing, and mind, the three of them, the combinations of the three. So grandmaster Lu said, the important point to stable your posture and the stable of the mind requires what is the bridge? It's just the concentrations on the breathing, which acts like a bridge to your physical and your mental stability. So six here. So as we know, the sitting meditation's posture is called the Varukana or the Tathagata, sitting posture, like a Buddha. And then balancing your breaths you have to balance it. You're not you know, strong and, and, and soft and all this. We're going to talk about it and stable of your mind. So the daily practice of sitting meditation is the part to healthy life and achieve the goal of 
uh, enlightenment. Next. So number 266, Golden Wisdom, Wang Jing, the Ju Zi, page 94, talks on the secret of the meditation. My secret yoga. This is what uh, Grandma Sri was emphasizing. He emphasized in this meditation that, next page, the first one is selfless yoga. Selfless, selfless yoga start with three important points, with breathing, first of all, with the fine, slow, and deep breathing, and then the sitting posture, and the mindfulness breathing. So then he did say that the teaching on the selfless is since Buddha's time uh, on the Four Noble Truths that all beings require to realize the reality of the life and which we all need to go through the stages of birth, sickness, old age, and that. Next. So the first one, breathing with fine, slow, and deep. So grandmas would say, you have to pay attention to your breathing. Breathing in and breathing out. Next. What is the breathing with fine, slow, and deep? Fine means not rough breathing. You know, when if somebody's going to die, what are they doing in the breath? They're grasping for the breath. If you look into the hospital, someone's going to die, the first thing is they're grasping for the breath because they're lack of the air. Now, number two, point is no rushing, rushing for the breath. You have to be slow, like a tortoise. You know, they're long life in tortoise. So if we are fast, we're grasping for the breath. That would not give you the stable to mind. Then the third point is deep. Of course, we're using our physical body with our lungs and our diaphragm expansions of it, so you can have the full air in your lungs. But in Vajrayana, we have the seven chakras you know, in our body. So we have a grammar school's teachings that you have to have a deep and then uh, go down beyond with visualizations into your, your navel chakra. So then that would help you to build up your inner energy. So when we're working on your breath, your concentration on your breathing, and then you have to let go of so things, your surroundings, your environments, and all your thought. Your mind should be fully concentrated on each breath, in and out, with your mindfulness on fine, slow, and deep breath. Okay, next. Sitting posture. Huh? Next. And the sitting posture is like a Buddha, sitting like a sta uh, stabilize your body with right uh, Tadagada sitting posture, like a Buddha. And the most important is you have to be straight. N next page, we're going to emphasize the seven points of the sitting posture. First one, roll your tongue to the upper palate, so you're not talking. Yeah, you're not gossiping, eh? You have to roll your tongue to the upper palate. If you have some saliva, just swallow it down naturally. The second point is concentrate your eyesight at the nose bridge level. So you like this. So if you are if you are um, familiar with closing your eyes, it's okay. But if you're not, you can just with the sight at the bridge of the nose. Third balance shoulders. So you're not sitting up, sitting down there with the posture lopsided. So if you're lopsided, what happened? Your spinal cord is going to be off too. It's not straight. And then if your eyes is rolling down, then you're not concentrating your mind. So your, back, your shoulders has to be balanced. Next is lift your chest uh, and tuck your chin down. Now lifting the chest, if you are curving chest, you your tends to go to sleep, dozing up. And uh, you could be like that. You know how heavy is our, our brain in our skull. It's holding by the, the neck vertebra. There's only seven bones to holding your, your skull and your brains. So you hold, lift your chest a little bit and then tuck your chins down, you lock chin there, so your head sitting on the 
spinal cord is vertical, and then the inner energy is able to raise. Now, fifth, raise your right hand on top of your left hand, like this, like Amidabha Mudra, and so place in front and below the navel chakras. Of course, you don't lift it up or some anywhere. Just in front will be the navel chakras there. Sitting in a full lotus or the half lotus, or sit on a chair. So, the best thing is you both of your feet with the bottom facing up, or half lotus. Or if you're in senior, you have a knee pain or arthritis or anything, then sit on the chair. The important point is that you have to sit still, stable your physical body. The last one, sit on the, with the four inches of cushions to stable the body. So if you're sitting to, on the floor, it's best to raise your buttock with the four inches of cushions. You know why? Because with our buttocks is soft. And in front, there's two legs, so you tend to go backward, like the airplane, you not know, flying. So you need to raise this bottom with four inches and balance it up. Then what happened? Your spinal cord, instead like this, is going to be vertical. Then you are able to sit still. Next page. Yeah, this is the full lotus and the half lotus, right? Next page. So if your body unable to sit on a full lotus position, alternations could use half lotus or sit on the chair. The important point is the stable of your body, right? Next page. So Grandma Sru said that we could look at the nose level in turn to stable your mind in the essence of the meditation. Next. And stable the mind. How are we going to do it here in this wisdom? Uh, here on page two six six, and my secret yoga mentioned that what six eighteen? Yes, uh huh. The selfless yoga on stable the mind by mindfulness breathing. So just now we mentioned about sitting positions, and then with your tongue draws up, balance shoulder, and then we are hands and your legs in a full lotus or half lotus or even sitting on a chair here when you breathe in you have the thing this breathe out I breathe in is not breathe out I so concentrate and repeating this breathing with mind reminding yourself this I is not I I'm not the I because we're always attached to the eye. How? Next, break, uh, next page. By repeating this breathing and constantly reminding yourself with a selfless thought, this eye is not I. So we're not attaching to this eye. The point of using this thought is to remind ourselves that breathing with one's physical body is selfless. Okay? So do this breathing exercise for seven minutes. Wow. Grandma's was very compassionate and loving kindness, saying that three times a day. So I think when we do our practice every day, we should do this. What is selfless? Selfless yoga, what is selfless? According to Buddhism, Buddha did not accept any self exits. He said that every living being requires to go through the cycles of birth, age, disease and death. This cycle is when one does not cultivate to realize the illusions of the soul and this world. One will remain in this samsara world. That's mean reincarnation. On and on and on and on stop. So the all phenomena in this world is impermanent, what Buddha said. It's the illusions of our six senses. What are the six senses? The eye, what we see, the hear, what we heard, the taste, and our thought, our touch, and our smell. All these six senses are non exits Okay? Uh -huh. So it's the illusions of our six senses with the intentions of grasping everything ex external to our senses satisfaction we always do this anything even taste our food right now all beings suffering from the grasping of the self from our six senses as the reality of 
I do exist. So in Buddhism, it's talk about non-I. So Grandma Stu was very talented in saying that when you breathe in, uh, this I is not I. So it's just, then your mind is always constantly on your breathing and your thought is clear, okay? So we have our feelings from our six senses with attachment of all what we see, smell, hear, taste, and touch, and thought too. So the I plays an important feature in our mind in every thought and every actions. So Grandma Salu emphasizing the selfless is so important in our meditations practice. For instance, when you do meditation, oh, I see something else. Or I see, you know, a Buddhist is talking to me and all this. So you're attached with all these illusions. The concepts of self has its deep rooted and feelings of I am. This is mine, this is I am, this is myself, this is mine. This gives us what? The source of attachment and grasping. The reality is there's no place for a metaphysical self. Grandma Stu's teachings on the selfless meditation is a brilliant device and a skill for men with reminding of illusions and overcome all the negative products that, of such illusions in our daily living. Next. So, selfless yoga was the first, first chapter. And then he talks about the next yoga is mindlessness yoga. Again, with the sitting posture, sitting posture of the Buddha. And then the mind, now it has even, even something else, even our thought, eh? You say, when breathing in, the mind say, breathe in this, breathe out thought, is not thought. So he say, concentration on your breathing with this thought is not a thought. And repeating and reminding yourself that this physical body is not yours and this thought is neither do not accept at all. So when we look into the Diamond Sutra in Buddhism taught by the Buddha Sakyamuni, it mentions that our six senses grasping for the external are unreal. So even our thoughts are all illusions and impermanent. Our thoughts are like the ocean's waves, non-stop with one over the others, whom, whom, would it stop? No, you can go to the ocean beach, sea beach, you can see that, right? And uh, is it normal? It's normal in our life, so everything is always, always in our mind, we all have the thought coming in, coming out, you know, always there, non-stop. So what are we gonna do in our meditation? This is what grandma was saying to them. This I is not I, this thought is not a thought. So, however, meditations, we try to reduce this high tide, you know, waves to a peaceful ocean. So you can get a high tide of oceans, like warm, you know, and with the thunderstorm and all this, because when we are in trouble and when we are in dissatisfactions and we are in a lot of problems, our mind is unstable. It's like an ocean wave with a high tide. And also, like the waterfalls, when you're pouring from the mountains onto the river, it's fresh everywhere. This is our mind when we are attachment to it. So then, you will have to practice like when the, when the water falls from the waterfall into the rivers and all the way going down latitudes and into the lake. And there in the lake, what's going to happen? It's peaceful. It's clear. So you're able to see to the bottom of the lake. So that in meditations means what? Buddha say, and Grandma Sru says that, is the clear visions of your own self. That is your Buddha nature. Yeah, so that's why mindlessness yoga is to give you the peace of mind to see your own Buddha nature. And this is all illusions, see? Next. So Grandma Sri say, with both the selfless yoga and the mindless yoga meditations will give one's concentrations and meditations and enhance one's mental, physical, and spiritual imbalance and in good health. 
and grandmas refer to said that it is advisable to practice only the selfless yoga meditations first. Until you are getting very familiar with it and in good practice of it, then you, you will practice the next mindlessness yoga meditation. So don't rush yourself. Use the first one. Next. So to book 266, Grandma Sri says, this is my secret yoga meditation. This is the training of the concentration yoga. So now, we could see that mindfulness on breathing meditation is so important because you will be able to get concentrations of meditation. What is the result on meditation then? Grandma Sri said, you will be able to attend samadhi and acquire your higher wisdoms. And as Buddha also say, your mind is in clear visions. So then you're able to review your Buddha nature. So this is in uh, Buddhism's meditation. But to our presence world now, and we know that meditation is able to enhance good health. So besides that, besides that meditation, in, uh, in doctors was also research on study of meditations from the modern scientists too. Page 23. The modern scientists research on meditations, eh? and it said the simplicity of meditations enhances mind concentration in peace and harmony and healing of the physical body. Next. So in modern society, most medical doctors say that most illnesses in our modern lives are stress-induced. Stress not only makes us miserable, it can make us ill too. And besides prolonged extreme stress is devastating and in our immune system. So stress induced is not that in your senior. You can see that nowadays they are what? From the young to the senior. Commit suicide, depressions everywhere. You never knew. And they're all in there. So next page. So the modern scientists research that meditation has proven that it is beneficial to good health, especially the neuroscientists, neuroscientists, that's the study of the brain, right? Telling us that meditations could help insomnia. What is insomnia? Your trouble in your sleeping, and stress release, depression, and it also helps memory strengthen. So if you always do your meditations daily, at least 15 minutes now, every day, you are able to strengthen your memory. It also lowers the hormone cortisol that's in the brain. The brain reproduces these hormones uh, that if you always find yourself in a high of this, high of hormone cortisol, your very anxiety, you know, your anger is there. So lowering meditation is able to lower your hormone cortisol and it helps you to memorize. So meditation also have records as enhanced happiness in the mind. Next. So neuroscientist says that when one engage with the behavior over and over again, it changes the activities in our brain. So this behavior of meditation over and over again every day, with 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or you practice your daily practice of half an hour, over and over again, in your activities in your brain, this means that a person of repeating the same actions of certain time, it can change the brain to a more positive response to overcome the anxiety and stress. That's, that's now we say the hormone, cortisol hormone, it can overcome it. So such daily meditations behavior to relax your mind. So when we say that we don't want like a water force, we want like a piece of lake. As we always do the practice, we always visualize a peaceful lake rising up with a mountain, with the Edom syllabus there, and transform into the Edom. What? Why is always on from a lake? The peace of the mind. Lake is peaceful, right? It's a beautiful lake. So, and um, even MRI, eh? you know, that you know, the machines goes into it to scan your brain and also has an indications of proving that brain's activities 
has changes, even though you are what? In your meditations daily. Next. So neuroscientists say that meditation also helps seniors. So not even the youngster have a depression or anything, anxieties. But neuroscientists also say that seniors are able to do meditations too. And in prevention of memory loss for their brain shrinking as they go older. See, when you go older, your brain, your, your skull is still the same size, but your brain is getting smaller, right? And then that's where you lost the functions of mobility, your moving and stretch out, and even memory. So, so the, you know, the, the wife said, where are you going? And the husband, I'm lost. They lost the directions. Next. So neuroscientists say that meditation changes the structures of the brain and it helps the memory of the brain and even able to control more things and decisions making and make life easier. So I could see that nowadays you can see that a lot of communities and societies and any kind of religions, they always sit down, do your meditation. Yeah, and uh, even in Japan, I think a lot of them advise us, you know, when you're too much stressful on your computer, sit down. Concentrate on your breathing, relax your mind, and your life is getting better, right? Next, 29, okay. Meditation enhances what young people learning and memory, emotional regulations, especially the young ladies uh, with the menstruation period, and they always have their different kinds of, you know, behavior. So then meditation changes the stress uh, uh, and also with the change in the brain cortex. So it changes the brain. So, so good. We are so lucky that we learn from Grandma Ruth with all this essence to tell us meditation was so good. So if you are able to get your children, your families, and try to go and sit down for five minutes every morning before they go to school or go to work, and it really helps them. And not only with your memory, and also with your hormones, and also with your a good memory on the study and a healthy body. Next, 30. So concentration meditation leads you to samadhi and physical good health. So when we summarize on today's forum, uh -huh, and from the Buddha, Sakamuni Buddha told us that meditations with posture and sitting up straight and mindfulness on the breathing to the revelations of sufferings to attain enlightenment. Buddha himself sat down under the Bodhi tree in Bogaya, India, and uh, he, was, he was in uh, enlightenment under there from his meditations. So then from modern scientists and neuroscientists and also proven that Buddhist meditations benefit our brains and from the mental to the physical wellness. It reduces a lot of illnesses and from stress to severe illnesses. So, so be much better. Next page. So we can see that and a uh, new book on 266, uh, Wang Jing the Ju Zi, ha, this golden wisdom. And uh, he has mentioned in page 94, My Secret Yoga Meditation. And with only one, this chapter, it has combinations of all, mindfulness meditation, you know, with your thought of the eye is not eye, uh, the, uh, this thought is not thought, no, it's not a thought. This mindfulness meditation and breathing meditation, you breathe in and out and concentrate on your meditation, chanting meditation, selfless meditation, and mindless meditation. Oh, so it's so talented. So all this just only one wise instructions from Grandma Lu and how do and how to do your meditations daily with only a few minutes with each practice. Do we? We do we follow him? You don't miss it, eh? So, next. So if you would like to learn from Grandma Lu's way of secret meditation, yoga meditation, next. Mm -hmm. browse into this through with the boy what, uh, website. Yeah, page 30. And be a member to find out on this book. 
It's called the tbboye.org. No more? Yeah. So however, to learn and practice Vajrayana teachings, you will need to take your refuge to the root guru, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha initially. This is the traditions of learning Vajrayana since thousands of years ago. So find out more from the tbboye.org and uh, how to acquire to, uh, to take your refuge and also to learn from this, um, this book, The Golden Wisdom. Uh, so we do hope that all will benefit from this forum chat on this book, 266, uh -huh, Golden Wisdoms and Chapter, My Secret Yoga. We would like to pay our highest respect to the Guru for his utmost uh, wisdom of meditation. And also thanks to Boye, uh, giving us a chance to give this precious forum on meditation which benefit all of us. So if there are any beneficials of the listening to this meditation's talks, this merits goes back to Grandma Sulu. And thank you very much. <laughs>